Hello, in this episode, it's me again, the Weather Observer. Thank you for watching my shared videos. I received a message from my colleague saying that a friend had a question after watching the Stratocumulus episode. The question is, how to distinguish the Stratocumulus and the Altocumulus at a very high level? So I decided to make this extra episode. Let's begin. We start with Altocumulus. I'll also be introducing Altocumulus in an upcoming video, so I won't explain Altocumulus in detail in this episode. I'll only say Altocumulus has different forms. One of the forms of Altocumulus is in pieces, slices, and arranges itself in an organized way. This is somewhat similar to Stratocumulus. In fact, the main difference between these two kinds of clouds is the height. To a new weather observer at the observatory, I'd suggest making weather observations with their mentor more often to gain more experience. Then determine whether it is altocumulus or stratocumulus through observing the shape, color, size and height of the cloud. If there is no mentor to learn from, we still have some general rules to try to distinguish whether it is stratocumulus or altocumulus. First, the observation angle should be greater than 30 degrees. Second, most of the regularly arranged small clouds should have a visual width between 1 and 5 degrees. The cloud that fulfills these two conditions should be altocumulus. Do you understand? You really understand what I'm talking about? I'm the speaker, and I feel it isn't easy to understand. So I made some drawings, hoping I can explain these two rules to you in a simpler way. The first condition is the observation angle. I always say, the very high stratocumulus. So how high is it? At least we have to raise our head to see it, so that it can be called high. How high should we look up? About 30 degrees. So do we have to bring a protractor to observe the weather? No need. First, extend your hand. Stretch your thumb and index fingers, and then put your thumb at about one foot away from your eyes. The thumb should be at eye level. When you look up slightly, the angle that your sight goes through the tip of your index finger is about 30 degrees. After raising your head to the appropriate angle, it's time for you to start identifying the size of the cloud. We also need to use our hands. This time you have to fully straighten your arms, then put out your little finger. The width of the little finger is about one degree of the visual width. Straighten your arm in the same way. Holding your thumb and little finger, raise the index, middle and ring fingers and put them together. The resulting visual width is around 5 degrees. That means when you look up to observe clouds, if the width of the observed cloud is greater than the tail finger, and less than the combined width of the three fingers, then it's probably altocumulus. In other words, even if the observation angle is over 30 degrees, and the cloud is still wider than the width of the three fingers together at arm's length, it's probably stratocumulus. Smart viewers may have noticed that the answers under these two rules all have the term probably. It's probably altocumulus. It's probably stratocumulus. The reason is, everything has an exception. However, these two rules apply in most situations. This is the end of this extra episode. If you have any more questions, I'll try to make another extra episode. Goodbye.